Bike TV in Portland here. As you may remember, the wonderful Kent Sutherland, rock on. Rock used, on. Used to be one of our most prolific contributors to the show. And Original. Alicia here too. And she lives in Portland and lives here. And you can see we're standing in front of a garage. You might say to yourself, a garage? Hmm. hmm. What do people put in garages? Garages. Let's see what do we got in the garage. Door number one. Bicycles! What do you got in this uh, garage? We've got a whole array of bikes. From little mini bikes, which we end up riding down the hill at, uh, at the zoo, uh, to trailers, giant trailers. Uh, We've got my dance bike in the corner, which was adapted just to dance with and on. We've got uh, oh, a loner got, bike. Yeah, loner bike, which needs some wheels. we got a, a flaming bike. And we have a bike that generates uh, electricity for blenders. And smoothies. And, and we have, our, of course, our commuter bikes. And we have our other bog trailer. And we have our parts pile because I like to build mini bikes. To the river. To the river. You're now at a traffic calming circle. And a traffic calming circle is installed normally in neighborhoods and on bike boulevards so that it warns people who are coming through that this is not a through street and that this is a neighborhood and you should slow down and you should be careful because there's lots of cyclists, pedestrians and families living here. And this seems to work extremely well in Portland because they have them all over the place. Whereas like we have one in Brooklyn or maybe two. And look, we have somebody here that's, that's it's using it. It's Squish! It's Squish! Hello, cameraman! <laughs> it's Squish! I wish I was on my bike today, but I'm opting to walk, and I'm going to ride later on this evening. Welcome to Bike TV. Hello, Bike TV. <laughs> <laughs> So why does that lady have yellow hair, the bike stencil? Well, you see this crazy guy at PDOT, that's the Portland Department of Transportation, uh, decided one day to get a little creative, got bored with his job or something, and just started painting funny hats on the, on the st regular stencil they had to mark the bike lanes. But it was important that he told the city that he was doing it on his lunch hour, and it was actually a group of people, according to the official city version. And they wanted to be very clear that they weren't ordering extra materials. It's actually the cutouts, if you can see, from the centers of the bicycles. They just come in round, so anything inside can be cut out and used as blank. And at first, they were a little like, he was unsure of whether or not people were going to like it. And then they started getting all kinds of letters and emails saying how much they were, loved it. And then they started sanctioning it, and he started getting a little even more creative and adding color and all kinds of things. Here's one of the blue colored bike lanes, and what that is is a you know an alert to motorists that it's a high traffic area, and bicyclists are trying to continue straight on to the Hawthorne Bridge. Yet there's a turning lane for motorists, so they want to illuminate this lane a little bit more to provide greater uh, visibility to the cyclist. And this is a very successful. Uh, example of how you can use colored lanes to aid cyclists to get through an intersection to create more safety and to create better organization between the traffic modes. Okay, we're going to the river. Portland, we're here at the Floating Bridge, and that's a uh, bikeway, greenway, multi-use pathway that was constructed on top of pontoons, and 
it had to be done this way because there was so little land available and actually the land that was available was taken up by the highway. So to continue this greenway, you had no other choice but then to bring the path out onto the water. And as you can see, it's wonderful. It mixes things up when you're out here riding. Now, the significance for us in New York is that you may or may not know, but there is a section on the West Side Highway, the Greenway, where between uh, the low 80s, 81st Street, I believe, and 93rd, that the path cannot go through. There's not enough land. There's currently a detour. And this is what transportation alternatives and other groups have recommended. And out here in Portland, it's shown that this can be done, and it can be done in a beautiful way. So let's hope that we get that. All I can say is it's one of the most amazing experiences to be riding. You feel like you're riding on the water. You just you're down there on this level, and the water is is right there on either side of you, and it's it's astounding. So it's, it's worth every penny. So it's time to go try that out, wouldn't you say? Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. What do you think about Portland? I love Portland and I love biking in Portland and I love it that I can be biking along and running to two people that I know. <laughs> and we can have conversations going up the hill. It happens all the time. Okay, we just ran into Elizabeth here who is a big friend of Bike TV and she's going to show us how to activate the bike signal and proceed through the intersection, right? Right. Excellent. Excellent. Cool. Good. Neither doing it. Okay. Go activate. Okay. Do you love that? Oh yeah. What's that for? It's for a cable access show in Brooklyn called Bike TV. Oh cool, I've seen that on the web actually. You have? Oh, would you like to say hi up hi to our Bike TV viewers? Hi Bike TV. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know this person? Who is this? This is Susie! Susie? Hi! Hello! Do you love bicycling in Portland? Oh yes. Yeah? What's the best thing about bicycling here? The best thing about bicycling is the wind in my hair. Oh, <laughs> yeah. that's nice. Aww. And the freedom and empowerment I feel. <laughs> Hello, New York. And I'll say hi to Ryan and Rebecca. Where are they hi, from? Guys. <laughs> Ryan has this really cute new bike that he got. I don't know if he's riding it, but get those, get those shoes and start riding. Tell us all you know about the steel bridge. This is the steel bridge. It was originally designed with just the upper deck and the lower deck for a train. This cantilevered section didn't exist until about three and a half years ago. When the city refitted the steel bridge, uh, bike lobbyists and the bike department here in Portland lobbied to get this added on, which was a huge fight because uh, most of the bridge belongs to the county, but the tracks underneath belong to the railroad. And it was a huge fight to get this section on because generally the railroad section lived up and then a train would come by and it would go down. Now it's the opposite. The bridge lives down and when a boat comes by, everything goes up. We just did the whole, pretty much the whole west and east side of the river south of downtown today. And it was, it was easy, you know, you just follow the signs. I've never done it before. I just looked at the map and it said there was a trail, so we went for it. What's the best thing about biking in Portland? I think one of the best things is that drivers are aware that that you're, you know, on the road. There's so many bikers that, you know, people become aware of it and watch out for you. So that's nice. Now this is really one of the most incredible things I've seen. You're practically on a highway which has a bike lane and a small lip here for pedestrians. But what's the most incredible thing about it is Right behind me is a yield the bike sign with a blue lane through it. And cars will actually stop short to allow the bicycles to pass through. You'll see, it's quite amazing. And like I said, this is literally a highway. So it's pretty damn cool to have kind of things like this going on. 
it shows how far Portland goes to accommodate cycling and make the cyclists safer, at least feel safer. Yay, Portland! Yay, Portland. Portland. So we Woo. saw a lot of cool stuff, a lot of traffic mitigation stuff that helps out cyclists. Uh, what else did we see? We saw some really innovative European designs. Innovative! Yeah! We also beautiful, 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 beautiful bridges. Hot bicycling chicks. We ran into a lot of cool people, talked to them, they talked back to us, which is always important. Always! They didn't curse at us! Yeah! And also we saw a bike symbol that had a blonde hair chicky on it. That was pretty cool. She was hot. But anyway, thanks for showing us around. We gotta come back to Portland. I do, and you should too. You got a bike move. You got a bike. So you got to move. Watch that. I'm just here to provide the bike move impetus. You know, when Aileen posted on the list, she said thanks to Timo for making sure that it happened because she wasn't going to do the bike move. She was like, oh, I'll get some trucks. And I was like, Aileen, you must do the bike move. And then the next thing she said was, thanks to Dan for really making it happen. Like, it totally wouldn't have happened at all. Like, Timo did this little bit to sort of make it happen. Yeah, we're all prepared. We're getting it all in one load. That's pretty impressive. I think the whole point of a bike move is for everyone to get together and to have an end destination where a lot of crap shows up and a lot of drinking happens. Really? That's pretty much that's pretty much what a bike move is. Yeah, yeah, and it's a good opportunity for Ian to wear his cute helmet. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, oh come here! Come on, babe. Come on, yeah. Oh, there look at that. Look, this is what happens at a bike move. I know. Wow. Yeah, oh, lots of love. Bike love. Hard. My heart is fluttering. <laughs> um, yeah, you just put the call out and more people show up than you usually need, and it's great fun. And also, as you're riding around, it's cool to see people react. They pedestrians and drivers just are amazed to see the stream of bikes going by with a household in them. Am I ready for the move? I'm always ready for any bike excitement that goes on in the city of Portland. Sean I, is moving and grooving. I didn't have his, enough coffee that's yet. That's his I mean, modus it's, operandi. It's 11 o'clock right now. I just want to wow. see if you can see something. Are you worried? I'm worried about him being able to see over the seats. Yeah, you can see okay, but you're going to want someone else. So how many moves have you participated in? Bike moves? Um, jeez, this is probably the fourth or fifth or something like that. And do you know what you'll be carrying today? Well, I have that little trailer over there with the orange thing on it. I have some boxes. I'm carrying, um, I don't even know, tools, table, a table, a uh, chair. You're not taking the couch by yourself? Books. No, my trailer's not quite big enough. We're waiting on that that trailer. It should be here any moment to take the couch. Oh, this is my third bike move, I believe. <laughs> um, I moved myself by bike once, but that was just me, and it took a lot of trips, and it wasn't as much fun. It felt really cool. I was like, I moved all my shit by bike. Me. I don't need anybody. You have pillows, blankets, and files. No, I have I have a, a computer and and some some steel, a few bricks. Pillows in there. It's uh -huh. true. I have a box yeah, over they here. Yeah, then I can handle it. Give me all the hard stuff. Oh, so what's that weigh? About four hundred pounds. At least. Yeah. Congratulations. My aunt's we're gonna hook up my boat and get that ready to go. So maybe you want to get it on film. <laughs> I will. I will. <laughs> all right, you get in the boat, and here it goes. Here's the boat. You're witnessing a theft. You gotta be kidding me. So why are we carrying a bike by bike today? <laughs> Does anybody know? Really we live in a culture of excess and Aileen has a lot of bikes. <laughs> More bikes, less riders. That's what I say. How many bikes do you have to move by bike? I have three bikes to move by bike. Wow, that's that's really impressive. And now that I have a new house, I can have more bikes. <laughs> When are you going to stop? 
How many? I want one more. I want a fast bike. What do you find most exciting thing about a bike move? It's amazing to see all the people come together and uh, just show the world that you don't need a car to move so much stuff. Yeah. You can move anything by bicycle, by human power. Just a, it's a triumph of human power. Cushion. Very important. The couch doesn't work too well without it. Yeah, don't worry about that trailer action. Uh, you can pull this up here, Ethan? Yeah. Who's trailers? Oh, Safety first. I really should have like a beer after. Yeah, yeah. Like even putting the tarp on. We're tarping it up. Here's Aaron Tarpman. <laughs> Are we ready to roll? Yeah! Yeah! Woo! Got a bike move. You got a bike move. You got a bike. So you got a move. The kitchen sink is in there, I think. You don't have to get there till Christmas. You're carrying extra slides. Oh yeah. So I'm taking, I'm taking my time. I got you down in the green gear. Oh, it's a successful move. It's the hardest part of the whole trip right now. And the best part is, when you're done, you have automatically like 20 people to help you unload. <laughs> and you're done in no time. Oh my god. I know, it's so like trashy 70s cocaine party. <laughs> Where are we heading with this? Luckily that's a small one. I think the bigger one's going to have more of an issue. The bigger one's in already. Is it? Yeah. Hey, look at that. Hey, no touching in the bathing suit area. <laughs> 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 hey, hey, Someone's got my clothes! Oh, I can't look at it. Oh, everybody. Oh, that's so crazy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they didn't get to ride on film. One thing you could do is to ease the, the pain of having to deal with the images of the automobile in our society. It's just to imagine things like highway overpasses as log flume rides in amusement parks. And, um, and that way, when, if you're riding under them, just imagine the water splashing over the side and, and all the people having fun riding down the, down the log flume, powered by gravity alone. It's a log flume! I'm Mark Lakeman, co-director of Creative Vision at the City Repair Project in Portland, Oregon. City Repair engages people at the most local levels to come together and to directly transform the commons where people live. City Repair began with kind of a creative uprising at this location where we just came out into the streets and we took them over and we said you know we don't have any public squares we don't have any you know places of gathering right where we live it's about time that we came out together and and we just created recreated the commons so that it actually reflects the, our our common vision and that's what we've been doing in Portland and many other cities around the country for about the last decade in Portland Oregon there's about seven uh, intersection interventions like this one. We call them intersection repairs. But there are many other kinds of installations around the city, something like 80 at this point. There are community meeting houses, 
uh, memorials, monuments, benches, kiosks, um, installations of all kinds that have to do with public art by and for the public where the public lives. What we've done here is we've called out the fact that something's different and that causes drivers to pay more attention. So they slow down before they come into the space. And um, it's, a, it's a pretty effective traffic calming mechanism that way. In fact, the American Journal of Public Health just recently published uh, uh, an article called The Intersection of Community Health. Researchers have established that because of these locations, um, and the things that are going on here, the people that live around the space for about a two block radius experience mental and physical health benefits as a result of these things happening. And it's really not surprising. I mean, if people aren't getting out and walking around, it's probably because they don't have anything to walk around and go, you know, go, go see or do um, in the housing tracts where people live. I think in every ma major American city, they've got goals like, you know, to, to raise the livability in a neighborhood, to slow traffic and, to get more eyes on the street, to get people talking to each other, and um, to make the streets safer, to make them cleaner, things like that. And uh, we realized that none of that was ever going to happen unless we were involved in, in, our own, in our own problems. So we thought, all right, let's make the streets safer by making them, them more interesting. Let's make the streets safer by, by, by creating something you know, marvelous for people to want to look at, you know, something different. And uh, you know, let's let's make our neighborhoods safer by bringing people outside of their 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 houses where they live these separate lives, and get them engaged in working together creatively, so that they'll learn each other's names. The city government they tried to come down on us, especially transportation. They were saying, you know, you can't do that. We're in control. And we wouldn't even answer them. You know, when they said, you know, we're in control. You don't have the power. Instead of saying, oh yeah, we have the power, you don't have the power, and then we get into a fight and they'd fine us and make us hurt. Our response wasn't that at all. We just said, you know what? Every single one of us is missing a public square. There isn't a neighborhood in this town that isn't missing a public square. Like, that was our response. And they were, they were dumb, dumbfounded. They were like, these guys will not fight with us. Our whole idea was to just directly create, treat everyone like an ally, try to bring everybody along because uh, this is something that matters to everybody, even if they're a bureaucrat that thinks that they have to, you know, they have to maintain control over others. We had to help them realize that they were involved too and they, they needed this to happen.
like the Euro trash bowing to you. And that's a good thing. <laughs> oh, that's the question. Delicious. Guess what? It's all from Viking. I love bike TV. It's the best show on TV. This okay. is Clarence. <laughs> the bike show. Okay. And I'm here with Claire. Who's your favorite cyclist? You. <laughs> but of course. This is the official auto free kitty. And he was found by an anonymous hero around the Brooklyn Navy Yards. Stop that!